G'day and welcome back for more Space Engineer Survival. And today we're going to get onto our design work with the front of the truck. And I've been, well, to be honest, struggling with how we're going to do this. I have a few ideas, so hopefully one of them is going to look all right. But before we get onto that, I have to give Izzy, well, Izzy's an absolute legend because his script that I turned off on the butterball, we can turn back on because he's he's fixed it for me after seeing the last video, which is just absolutely amazing. We'll go to edit, we'll go to browse workshop and it's Izzy's ship refueler, okay. And we can scroll down to this connectors section and this is where he's fixed it. If you don't want the ship to recharge the batteries when docked to specific connectors, declare them here. So all I need to do is come up with a name for the trailer, or name for the trailer's connector, which let's call it the Butterball Trailer, and that should work. And with that name in there, we can click check code, okay, remember an exit pop out and if we hop in our cockpit down here we can jump to our complete connector because the one on top is not welded up yet so we know this is the one at the rear and name it the butterball trailer and that's it we're done now instead of the butterball when it connects to the trailer making well making the truck have no battery power left whatsoever we can fly over here and because that connector is in the exclusion oops is in the exclusion list it will not activate the script when I dock well will not activate the taking over of all of the power so if we have a look in here no recharge on all of the batteries which is perfect can't thank you enough for that Izzy you are an absolute champion there are a couple of other updates to that script as well. One that allows it to activate a timer when you dock or undock from a connector so that you can have your lights switch on and off as you dock and other things like that. And from what I understand about it, I haven't played around with it just yet, but I am going to. You should just be able to set up the timer as you normally would and just trigger it with the script, which is incredibly easy and perfect for someone like me. So now that we've got the back of the truck set up, and I think it's looking reasonably good, we need to think about how we're going to do the front. And I am going to start in an odd place. I'm going to start at the rear wheels. And the reason I'm doing that is because I am on Struggle Street coming up with a good plan for what to do at the front. Hopefully, after we've done the rear parts, we'll have a bit of a stronger idea of what we can do down the front. What I'd like to do at the rear here is really stop with the last block being back here. I don't want to extend it much further, but maybe we'll do this, make it one block further. We go one there, one there, and then the reason I want a square facing block at the very back here is that I want to put some lights on the back of this so that we've got a little bit of light in between the trailer and the front, which will make it easier when we're disconnecting and reconnecting the trailer from the truck. And now we should be able to go there. What I also want to do is recess in this part a little bit. So we'll go that and then at just one block in front of it, we'll go there. Put some half slabs in between and just so that we can grind off those other bits, let's pop a couple of those in there. And now we can grind off the top row safely. I wonder if there's a different way we could do this from the side. So the top is fully connected, yep. Let's grab these instead. Go with that. That and then a couple of these. Let's see how this looks. 
always like to create a little bit of extra clearance underneath, so why not? Plus, it means I can actually walk under it. That's kind of cool. Kind of handy. I think that works. I'm going to stick with the flat surface on top because i got a plan for that later. So around this side, what I'm going to do is try and give us a bit of extra space. So we're going to go with that, then that, and then we go with one of these. That, and then a couple of slabs in between. Nope, not that. That, like so. I'm going to weld these bits as I go because it makes it a little bit easier for later. I think we can get away with one more block in, but it's only going to be a partial one. So if we go with that there, same there, then we can use our standard slope in there, there. Grind that off. That. That. And then a slope up there. I think that'll look okay. Let's have... I'll have to have a bit of a look from behind. See if it looks too bulky. I think it's looking alright. I mean, it is a truck. It should look a little bit bulky, so it makes sense that it's carrying such an enormous weight. Then we can follow up with the same we did on the other side with our little slopes here. Then we can use these ones to do the final bit. Instead, let's make this recess in as well. Let's have a look at this from a bit of a distance. Yeah, if I can come up with some decent design for on top, I think that will work. Then we've gone out for the next wheel, and then we need to come around and join onto where this rotor is at. So I'm just going to do one side at a time. Once I've got one side and I'm happy with it, I can just copy it nice and easily. Now with this, let's... Bring, oh, I'll fix that later. Let's bring these across. This down here. And we'll go one, two, then we're going to drop in, come back out, slope and slope. How's that going to look in terms of shape? Let's weld this up one. Normally I can get away with building a lot of these things just with the scaffolding blocks themselves. But for this particular shape, there's a lot of fine details, so I like to weld up as I go. And this is how I originally started building. Before I had spent many, many, many hours in Space Engineers, I always built each block as I placed it because I just couldn't get my head around what I was looking at otherwise. And if we go with another couple of blocks under here, Nice little slope, same as the other wheel. Alright, what are we going to do around this rotor? Now we can see if we wander forward, we've actually got half blocks here, and then we've got full block here with the rotor. Quite clearly I didn't plan this very well, because <laughs> I probably should have had the rotor one block higher. But we're stuck with it now because redoing this at this stage is going to be incredibly difficult. And why not have to work around a problem that we created ourselves? Or I created myself. So what we're going to do is we know that these blocks are the lowest part. So let's bring them up and join them fully to the ship by doing this. Go one there. Should be able to use this there. Use the same on this side. Then we'll use our tip from this set on each side. And I've used the wrong block there. 
I want to use this one. That makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? <sighs> Probably a few people groaning at me just then. Let's weld those up like that. Then we've got a connection all the way through, so I can grind that out, that out, that out, that out. So we're kind of, in some ways, continuing that dog bone pattern that's at the back. Maybe I'll have to make it a bit more bulky like these. Hmm. Leave that for later. And let's match up the inset on this set of wheels to the previous one. Sort of. It's not going to perfectly match up, and that's okay. That's kind of what I want. If we then continue these half blocks all the way down and... Yep, there's multiple connections here. We should be able to find. Gives us a bit of room to play with as I make everyone anxious as I go around with my grinder, my very fast grinder. And then on this wheel, we will go with one of these just like before. With this section here, I've got a bit of a problem because these blocks around the rotor are lower than these ones underneath the front axle. I'm going to need to raise somewhere in here and make it look like it was all on purpose. And the way I think we'll do that is up until where the rotor is under here, we'll stay at this full block. And then as soon as we're past the rotor, we'll lift up and create that extra space and that means that the way we'll attach to the front wheel is going to be different to the way we've attached to this one and what we might even do is not at all what I was thinking there instead why don't we do this if we go all the way back to here we can make this fit a lot nicer by putting that in there which works, and then take that block out there, pop in one of those, start with a few slabs, and then maybe at this one we will go in one further. So then at this next block, actually, let's not do that either. Even better idea. Let's go to there. Then I can grind this out. Yes. This is all looking very sketchy when I pull out my grinder, but it's okay. Then we go there. Then we go there. And then... How are we going to do the next bit? How am I going to do this transition? It's a bit of an awkward transition going from the side around then coming back to the front here and having to also drop to this half block hmm and it's a bit of a struggle one but if we then go to one of these we should be there so if we go like that and then we can put this one in here this two by one base That doesn't look quite as awkward as I was worried it might. Let's get rid of that. Let's put in our slabs and join up to the front so that I'm not... So that I stop reducing the number of connections and start increasing them. Then, this is, the, this is going to be the interesting bit. How are we going to work this? What if we do that, followed by that, and how does this look? Hmm. We could work with this, actually. I'm not sure how much I like this little bit sticking out, but if we continue that idea you know, up into the cabin area, it might actually work. What I'm thinking of doing is maybe bringing, if we use our welder as a pointer, bringing the top of the cockpit up and a little bit back and inset there, which should give us plenty of room for extra batteries, which is definitely, definitely a good thing. And 
that's, I think, what we're going to go for. I'm going to put one of those in there. Now, this next bit, we need to make this section here a look a little more bulky. If we look from the side, that all looks very, very flimsy. So, in order to bring this a bit of extra bulk, what we will do is... Should probably start. Actually, no, we will start with this one. There. Go to our slope. Go back to our corner. Another slope. Then we're going to match up to what's underneath with one of those. One of those. And then we can just continue a full block line back through here. That's looking okay. Next up, we need to add a couple of extra batteries and I think we can fit one there. Don't want to put another one there, but maybe if we go with another one there and is three adequate. No, let's make it four. So we're going to have a nice big battery pack on this thing. And we may even be able to fit a fifth up here somehow, depending on how we do the rest of the armor. But lots of batteries is definitely a good thing. And I'm actually going to weld up those batteries while we're here, because I'm about to clad them in armor, and then I'm not going to be able to reach them. So we'll jump back once those are fully welded up. And I'm reasonably happy with the progress so far. It's going okay. Alright, with our batteries in, now the front of the truck started to look a bit more bulky, which I'm actually quite happy with. What I'm going to do at the back of these batteries is build a bit of a wall of armor blocks. So that we've got something to work off. Some of you may notice that my building style here is a little bit different and that is because I have never built a semi-trailer before so I'm having to work out this design as we go it's not something that I've built a few times before so I had a really strong idea of how I was going to build it right from the word go this one's been a bit more on the fly which kind of shows you a little bit more of my actual design process I guess and let's go with one of those and then we'll go with some tips here and a large part of my design process is reusing shapes and forms that I've used in the past that I think have worked and trying to fit them to my new designs and that ends up usually working out okay how's this looking from the side yeah that's going all right now, what I want to do here is a little bit of fake aerodynamic styling. Like you often see on the back of a semi-trailer, there's that little scoop that goes toward the actual trailer. And I kind of want to see if we can emulate that a little bit here. Let's bring these all the way down the side, right to there. Then we'll use our slope Ooh. maybe not maybe energy just to there low. oh no energy low it's nice that they brought the voice back I missed it okay we can do that we can follow that up with another one of the same so that side bit there is looking a little bit boring let's do one of these in here. Oh wait, huh. I know why it's looking boring. Because there's going to be a big hulking thruster attached there. Completely forgot about that. Alright, big hulking thruster coming up. Yeah. Now we're not looking so boring. Maybe, yeah, we'll go forward there. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I knew there was something missing. I just felt it. 
Put that underneath because that'll attach to... That'll make it look like the thrust is attached. I did place that around the right way, didn't I? Yes. Good. So the big hulking thruster is going to go there, which means nothing can go behind it. And I'm hoping I've got this right, but I should have enough blocks between the front and the trailer to use the thrusters when we're going straight ahead. If I'm trying to use the thrusters while we're in a tight turn that's tight enough that they could hit these cargo containers, I'm doing something wrong. So I shouldn't really be using them there. It's a little silly if I try to. And that means that it should be okay to use them when I want to, which will be going straight, heading up a big steep hill where I need that extra boost because these cargo containers, when they're full of ore, are going to be incredibly heavy. Back to the armor design now that I've looked at that side and gone, eh, boring. Oh, wait, no, I'm right. I need to fix this. <sighs> what am I doing? What am I doing? All right, let's pop that in there. We might figure out a way to make this look a little more interesting later on. Let's go with now. Let's try this. So, with those out of the way, let's try a little bit of something different. If we go with that there, that there, then number eight, there. And find you away. Another number eight there. Okay, I think that works. Then what we're going to need to do is have something leaning in at the top here, which can be that. Yep. And now. On top of that, I'm going to place one of... We'll have to recharge in a second. So this might give me the sloped look toward the rear that I'm after. Maybe. How does this look from the side? If we add in a little bit of a lip there. That kind of works. I'm going to need to add something else on top because it feels like that's been chopped off at the top. But I'm reasonably happy with that. And the reason I'm going with this kind of streamlined look is because this is a rocket truck. Well, a jet truck. It's got two massive large atmospheric thrusters on it, so it should look a little bit streamlined, I think. And next up, let's do these side parts. And I think I know what I'm going to do here. We'll go with these, and then we'll just follow this up with some simple slopes down the side, all the way to the front. And in some ways, this shape mirrors what's on the underside with the rover cockpit. If you have a look, we've got this kind of curved surface around there, and that sort of mirrors that. Now. What I next want to do is we need our reverse or extra braking thrusters as well. And I think possibly the best place to put these is going to be directly above the cockpit here. We could even add three by putting one in there, one in there, and one in there. But maybe not this top one. Hopefully just two will be enough. It's just for a bit of extra braking when we're going downhill so that we don't end up with a runaway situation where the trailer then overtakes us and we end up with all sorts of disasters. I want to definitely try driving this truck safely and sensibly so that I don't end up with a very expensive and time-consuming build flipped and exploded. Although hopefully if that does happen, I remember to use to activate that Ansel thing and show it all in glorious still motion. Still motion? No. If that does happen, hopefully I will remember to press the Alt F2 for Ansel so that we can explore the dynamics of the crash 
in a perfectly still environment. Now, this is going to be a tricky part. Maybe I brought that down too early. Because I need to have a... I want to have a little bit of something. Maybe we could even just go with this little. A little bit of something over those thruster spots. This is certainly a build where I'm having to move back and have a look at it again and see where shapes might be working where they're not. And that's almost working, but what I think I see now is all of this level of armor needs to be lifted up one block further so that we've got a bit more room to play with. Nope. Nope. Not happy. Not happy. Okay, I'm going to jump ahead to when I've ground off all of this and I'm ready to go with the redesign. I'm going to keep roughly this shape, I do like it, but it needs to be taller to give myself more room at the front. Because right now, I just am not happy. Maybe if we build up to a bit of a hump at the front and then come tapered back, that would work better. So let's get rid of some of this, and then we'll jump ahead to when I've cleared it all out. Hopefully without grinding off too many important parts. Okay, let's try this again. Instead of sloping back immediately, I'm going to build a row across here. Go with that. Go with that. Nice row of blocks there. Then, we're going to start sloping. And what we'll do is that there, that there, okay so it's looking a bit more bulky at the front which is probably a good thing and let's, if you notice that I got rid of the thrusters I'm going to place the armor out first and then figure out where I'm going to put them I think they were throwing me off in terms of my design, so I just decided to get rid of them altogether for the time being. Now that can go and become one of these again. Yeah, that is already starting to look a bit better. Alright, now what we need to do is grab some of these blocks and invert it directly on top like this because then we've got a nice sharp edge to work with which makes all of oh dear I will grab some hydrogen and be right back it's a good thing that we get an awful lot of hydrogen out of the ice because I collected 12,000 units of ice right at the start I am incredibly wasteful with my jetpack and I've still got heaps left. At least personal hydrogen use is pretty uh, minimal. Okay, now that we've got hydrogen, we can finish off what I'm doing here. We'll go with that. Then we'll go to this tip here. Aha! That is looking much better. Lots of sharp angles. All right, next up, let's put a row of blocks in here. We could probably... I wonder, with how high I'm going with our armor here, we may even be able to squeeze a fifth battery in if I get rid of these blocks. I'm going to grind them off, and I'll place a battery there, but I won't weld it up until we're sure that it'll fit underneath the armor. Actually, <gasps> better idea. Much better idea. Just in case, let's put a little bit of a safety feature on this. Let's put a, an oxygen hydrogen generator on here. We'll be able to put a little bit of ice in this through direct access of the cockpit. So if we have it in our own personal inventory, we can shove it in the cockpit, get the ice into the O2H2 generator and use that as backup 
just in case I'm flying around doing some repairs and I run out of hydrogen and we're miles away from base. I think that could be helpful. Especially since this is sort of, in some ways, a mobile base of operations. It should probably have a couple of safety features. Alright, now at the front we are going to go with these and then these are probably what we'll have to do. Let's make them line up nicely and we'll use these bits. Hopefully that'll look alright. I'm not sure how I feel with those two lines being the way they are, but we'll see. I think it'll look better than if I'd had these not lined up with the correct surface. And then, nice and simple, slope, slope slope and another slope hmm 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 oh better idea not slopes let's not go with simple anywhere here let's grab one of those no that's not going to work I was hoping to put one of these right next to that but it'll only line up partially. Because if I put that there and then try and squeeze this here, if we weld those up, we'll see that it, it lines up on that edge, but it doesn't line up on that edge. So I can't really do that. Yeah, that's going to look funny. Back to slope, 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 slope. Then we'll use our... Nice, smooth transition again. Oops. It's interesting. Not sure I'm entirely sold on it, but it's interesting. I think I've got maybe some little things I can do to make it work a bit better. Okay, our generator's in, so now I can cover it up with armor. We'll just do something simple like that. Then what we'll have is this was probably going to be best running back to about there then we'll go down and flat to there maybe we'll go right to the back down to there how does that work i think that looks okay for now this middle piece i wonder if we'll get away with sticking that out to there Shouldn't get in the way of anything. Then we'll go straight along. Whoops. Straight along. And run out of steel plate. I think we need just a little bit more in the middle. What if we do just a little... Don't have a llama cap maybe starting there. Use our little corner half slope things. Back to it here. Slope tips. And then slabs in the middle. Alright, I'm going to weld this up quickly and see how it looks from the side. It's a bit of an aggressive truck design, which I like. From a distance, I think it mostly works. I'm certainly happy enough with it for now, I'd say. There was something I said I needed to do earlier as well, which is do something on this flat area here. And I think I'm just going to keep it simple and we'll add a slope down this end and a slope down this end with a whole bunch of slabs in between. And I have absolutely fallen in love with using the slabs in my designs. I'll be honest, they just allow you to add that little bit of greeble where you need it without having to add a huge amount of extra block space, which is so good. And then all the way down the sides, I'm just going to place these. Nothing too complex, 
but I think it will make a bit of a difference here in terms of making that section of the trailer look complete. Oh, that's truck. It's on the truck, it's not the trailer. Alrighty, roll that up and see how it looks. Okay, how does that look? Looks like something's missing. Let's grab these two. Grind those down. Oops, didn't want to go the middle one. Okay, I'm now seeing a little bit of why people might be nervous when I'm using my grinder the way I do. As I did just accidentally grind several pieces I didn't mean to. <laughs> I think what we'll do is we'll do these tips in here. How does that look? Yeah, I think that works a bit better. Cool. Then, we are pretty much done. Okay. So that is mostly complete from this side. I'm fairly happy with that, as it turns out. This bit here does look a little skinnier than I'd like it to. But... I'm not sure what we can do to fix that. Do we have the parts to toy around with that at all? I don't think we do. I don't think we've got the necessary slopes in order to bulk that part out. No. Alright. Last bit before we do the matching side is figuring out how we're going to do the underside. And I'd say we go with something nice and simple, like this. Been doing a lot of fiddly stuff. Let's just keep the underside simple. Hopefully we're not going to see very much of it. If we're seeing a lot of it, that means I flipped. And let's hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> I mean, unless you want to see those fireworks. In which case, sure! Hope for the crash! Okay. Nice and simple. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to step in toward the center and then step out toward the side with these armor um, slopes like that. Now since we got that pattern here I might even do something a little bit similar on the front end here. If we go with tip, one tip, two tip, three tip, slab. And there we go. I think this is working pretty well. I'm going to match up the other side and weld up this thruster and its pair on the other side. And then we'll have a look at this in its completed state with everything as I've placed it out so far. Hopefully reasonably happy with the end result. And I think I will be. Some of the angles here I'm not supremely happy with. This edge here is deliberate. I don't want all of the faces to join into each other. I want it to look a little bit faceted in places. But overall I'm reasonably happy with this. Certainly not as simple as the trailer. The trailer design worked out a lot... Well, worked out exactly as I'd hoped. The front end is a bit more tricky. But we'll see what we can do I really think I want to do something around here. What if we do this? What if I just take a little chunk out with one of these? Like that. Like that. Maybe? I kind of feel like it should be... No. Maybe it should be... We'll take that little chunk out, but what we'll do is we'll do it here. So we'll go with that. That. Then we'll put our little tip back in here. It's something. It's not quite everything though, is it? Maybe if we do this as well. Oh! 
This one might work. This might do the trick. Might do what we need. We grab one of those, one of those, those, that. Then finally go to our tip. A little bit of flare there. Just for the sake of it. Okay. I'm somewhat happy with that. I'm not sure if it looked better or not before, but it certainly got rid of that flat area, which I... Well, you all know, I don't like bricks, I don't like flat. Alright, now it is definitely time for me to match up sides and weld ahead. So I'll be back once that's all complete. Alright, and that's mostly complete. I still should probably weld up those conveyors and that connector on top. But, I'm actually reasonably happy with this result. I wasn't expecting to go for a really sleek looking truck and fit with the jet thrusters and everything, but as it turns out, I kind of like it. It's a bit silly, it's a bit fun, and I'm reasonably happy with it. Now, do we need something on top of those thrusters? Maybe we could do something fairly minimal if we grab that, that, put a slab there, how does this work? Looks okay from the front, yeah I think that'll actually look a bit nicer. Not sure if that means we need to change this around though. I think we should. So, I dislike that this isn't attached to anything. I'd be okay with a little bit of it not attached and it will end up being that way. But, at least if the main flat section is connected, otherwise it'll look a bit silly. So then we can go with this in... Not that one, this one. No, it was that one. What am I doing? And then... Like that. Okay. <sighs> yeah. I think it's time for a test drive. Oh, no, wait. One thing to do. Need some braking thrusters. Oh, are they going to fit there with that oxygen generator in there? Hmm. Maybe, maybe not. Does it look funny with them sticking out? I think it will. I think we'll end up going in here. What we'll do is we'll go right there, do this. I think this is going to be the best place for them. At least until something better comes up. We'll weld those up, and then we're going to go on a test drive. I think the thrusters do look a little bit funny on the front, the braking ones, but it's what we got. Let's group them. Atmospheric thrusters, braking. Oh, caps is on. Let's grab our large atmospheric thrusters as well. Booster. Now let's pop them on our hotbar with toggle on off and toggle on off. Do we need anything else on the hotbar at the moment? Not for the test drive. Let's go. Probably less than ideal that the um, Decoy is sitting right there. Oh, need to turn those off. Now, don't probably want to reverse the whole way down the hill, do I? Ah, here's something else that was suggested to me. I think we should be able to do it since we've got the clearance for it. I am going to grab our rotor three, rotor two, I think. Yeah, we're going to make this minus 90. We're going to make this 90. I think we should be able to get away with that. If we go this way, can we do it? Yeah. So we can turn much more sharply now. Which will be incredibly helpful. As we are about to go downhill. And I would not have been able to make that turn otherwise. It's 
Let's try and make this a little more cinematic without any HUD up. Oh yeah. This is working. Oh, yes. Can't believe this plan actually worked out. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, it is so cool that Space Engineers has finally gotten to a point where we can do stuff like this in survival without worrying that everything is just going to explode with Clang. It's absolutely awesome. That is our way down, isn't it? Yep. Oh, yes. Do I dare drive from first person? Let's try it. This is why I love this rover cockpit. You can, if you want, drive from first person and still see pretty well. Keeping my speed nice and low. Uh-oh, something's wrong. I appear to be wedged on a rock. I think that's the toughest part for this vehicle. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down the hill, turn around, and when I get ready to... Uh oh, this is why I need the braking thrusters. Can't slow down. Can't slow down enough. There we go. And they were the difference there. That helped us slow down just enough to keep ourselves from going beyond the speed limit that I would like to take this, which is realistically 20 meters a second. Let's do a little bit of a U-turn and then we'll head back up to base because if I'm going to use this, I should really have at least a temporary connector set up for us to be able to unload. Otherwise, I'm going to have to unload using the butterball. In fact, I may end up doing that way. I may end up being lazy and waiting until I've got the hangar properly constructed before I build any sort of piston base connector for that one on top of the cargo containers. But let's see if with no load I can make it up here comfortably. I suspect given the weight of the butterball I'm still going to need to use the boosters a little bit. Let's get going. Turn in here. And see our speeds coming down even though I'm full pedal to the floor and that's where we stop all right boosters on oh we accelerate easily nice oh, yes 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 this is amazing this is just everything I hoped it would be oh. woohoo well there's going to be a big mining trip with this thing and a lot more building. So with that and plenty more to come, I'll see you then.